Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Amir Mazahiri and I'm welcome to my uh, PhD final defense session. My dissertation title is Video Content Understanding Using Text. So today we have access to various sources of video and text data. Social media, movie industry, and TV broadcasts are all examples of video data sources. And we have textual data appears as caption, audio description, and subtitles for these kind of videos. So, in fact, we are living in the big video and text data era. 82% of the IP traffic today is consumed by video content. As an example, there are only on, only on Instagram, there are about 100 million videos post every day. And more than 92% of these videos have a caption longer than 50 characters. On the other hand, natural language and vision are two main mediums of humans to communicate and understand each other. And we can understand them, understand them jointly. So what does that mean? So if I ask you which of these videos is about eating the watermelon, you can easily say this one is. So basically, you can solve a retrieval problem. If I ask you, what is the rapid eating? So you can easily answer watermelon. So you can answer a question based on video. And if I say the rabbit is eating a pizza, you can easily say it's wrong. It's eating a watermelon. So you can verify and correct the sentence based on a video. And if I say, imagine a baby is walking, all of you can have some kind of imagination about it. So you can solve a generative model with text and natural language. So today we have access to this great source of information. And on the other hand, we know that humans also can understand natural language and vision jointly. So this motivated me to study machine learning based methods for video content understanding using text. So there are some challenges to that. So videos may contain multiple scenes, objects, and humans, and not all of them are in the captions. Also, there are many words in the captions that they don't have any visual appearance. For example, rapid eating a sweet watermelon, we don't have any clear visual pattern for the word sweet. On the other hand, concepts may have correlations. So we have correlation in the visual word, like visual co correlations, like the word Road, uh, the concept road and sky coexist frequently in the videos. And we have textual correlation. For example, the words kids and playing happens a lot together in sentences. So we need learning methods that can capture these correlations. So here's the contents of this dissertation. The first chapter we will talk about is learning a multi-concept video retrieval. Then we go to video fill in the blank visual text correction, and finally, generating videos from textual descriptions. So let's, let's start with learning a multi-concept video retrieval model with multiple latent variables. This work is published in ACN Transactional Multimedia 2018. So all of us use natural language sentences to interact with video search engines like Google, Bing, or Yahoo. So the way these search engines work is that they have access to a lot of videos and also visual concept detectors. So the search engine basically select a few concepts out of your search query based on its visual concept detectors and rank the videos for you. So the main question is that how do they fuse these concept detectors output? One baseline method is to basically average this course from different concept detectors. However, there might be some correlation between these concepts. For example, if we know that whenever we see an airplane, we see a highway as well, then we can know that we can give more weight to the airplane detector than highway detector. So there are some correlations. There can be also positive or negative correlation with other concepts that which are not appearing in the text query. For example, polar bear can have a negative correlation with concept highway. So in this work, the input to our algorithm is a set of multi-concept queries like nighttime and cheering or beach and boat. 
and we have a set of positive and negative videos for each query. Also, we have access to the scores of all independent concept detectors. During the training, we minimize a pairwise rank ranking loss, which is motivated by ranking SVM. And the output is a generalized model which applies to any multi-concept queries. So, this is our pairwise ranking loss. Here, Q is a multi-concept query, like airplane and highway. And I and J represent, represents a pair of positive and negative videos for query Q. F is the scoring function that we want to learn. And L is a ranking loss function. In this research, we use hinge or zero one loss function. So how do we represent a video? So videos consist of shots. Shot is a sequence of frames with minimal appearance change. We show each video with a matrix named phi, which has H rows, where H is the number of shots, and Q columns, where Q is the number of concepts. So QGMP means the score of concept detector P for shot G. So here is our uh, scoring function. Q is one concept. And we have two terms in our scoring function. The first term captures the scores based on correlation in the shot H. And the second term captures the scores based on all the concepts from all the shots. So basically, the second term is an intershot scoring function, and the first term is an intershot. So we take the gradients respect to the uh, parameters and we come up with the updating rules. So this is the intra-shot term updating rule and this is the intershot term updating rule. And we can uh, train the model with these updating rules. So for our experiments, we use the trick with data set which has mm -hmm. more than 2300 videos and we use training and we split it to training, validation and test. And we use UCF detectors for Scene Challenge 2015 as our independent concept detectors. We use 50 pairs of queries, pair queries to train the system, and 100 pair concepts and 50 triple concepts to test the system. For the evaluation, we use normalized discounted cumulative gain uh, to, as an evaluation metric. So here are some uh, exa example queries, for example, instrumental musician and nighttime, or bicycling and forest. So let's look at some quantitative results. Here we show the NDCG for the top five, top 10, over top 50 uh, ranked videos. Here are some baselines. The best baseline that we have is actually that averaging method that I talked about earlier. Then we use 30 concepts to train our system and we can get up to 62.8%. If we increase the number of concepts that we have in the pool of the concept detectors to 60, and if we use a hinge loss, we get 63.6, and if we use a zero one loss, we can go up to 64.9%. What about unseen queries? An unseen query means that combination of the concepts that we haven't seen during the training. So for the unseen pair concepts, here the blue line is our method and the red line is the average. And we see that we are constantly above the average baseline. If we go to triple concepts, so we increase the number of concepts in the search query, we see that the margin between our method and the baseline increases. It means that our method is more robust to our more uh, to to more concepts in the search query. So here are some qualitative results. So for the search query forest and lake, this video that you see here with the average baseline baseline had the rank 32, and with our method the rank improved to 25. And some more examples. For example, here this is a triple concept query bridge chair highway, which was rank 144 and it improved the rank to 40 after applying our method. So in this chapter, we have studied a multi-concept based video retrieval, which is a central component in video search engines. So in this work, a principal retrieval model is introduced, 
which can model the concept correlation and also takes advantage of unselected and extra concepts. So what are the limitations? So the output of a retrieval system is videos. All of these videos contain one more concepts. What if we need to know more knowledge about a single video? So we have to ask questions about that video. So it leads us to this next chapter, which is video fill in the blank. And this work material is published in ICCV 2017. So what is fill in the blank? The input to the fill in the blank problem is a video and an incomplete uh, description sentence. For example, in this case, he blank up the steps of the stand and away. So the output is the missing word. So basically, this is a question answering problem where the question comes in the form of fill in the blank. So here is the block diagram. So we have an incomplete sentence and a video. We pass the incomplete sentence into a sentence encoder and also we encode the video with temporal and spatial attentions. And finally, we have an inference module that can give us the missing word. We're going to go through these modules one by one. So the sentence encoder must be able to encode a fragmented sentence. We encode each fragment with LSTMs. So basically, we encode the left fragment with one LSTM and the right fragment with another LSTM and we pass the encoded fragments to the opposite part of the sentence. So we encode the left fragment again knowing what happened in the right fragment and the same for the right fragment. And finally, we aggregate the output of all of these four LSTMs into one vector named U of Q. A special attention. A special attention means which regions of a frame to look to answer this question. So if we have this video and the question someone was out of the corner of his eyes as the kid finds a cheap suit inside, we assume that there is a grid on the frames. And we assign one score to each cell of this grid. It forms an attention map for us. And then we can pull features from these attended part of the frames and call it the spatial representation of the video. Temporal attention means when or which shot to look at to answer a question. So basically given this question, the most related part of the our video is this shot. So basically we want to pull features from this shot and call it a temporal representation of the uh, video. So for the inference, we aggregate a temporal representation, a special representation, an encoded sentence into one vector named U, and we pass it to the classifier. We have a basic one layer classifier here. And we find a word which has the maximum probability to be the missing word, and this is the answer. For the experiments, we use the large scale movie description challenge data set. It has about 360,000 samples. And this data set is built upon movie audio descriptions. Audio descriptions are for people who are blind and cannot watch a movie. And it has a lot of artistic sentences and complicated sentences. And it has a large dictionary of words, like 21,000 words in the dictionary. Also, the videos vary in length, 2 to 60 seconds. So let's go through quantitative results. First, keep in mind that human accuracy is 68% on this data set. The first set of experiments is a text-only method, and we call it blind test. It means that we just look at the question, and we find the answer without looking at the video. So the random guess is almost zero. If we uh, do, if we use LSTM to just encode the left fragment and on, or only uh, encode the right fragment, we're going to get something between 15 to 16%. If we use a body LSTM, the results improve to 32%, and our method can give us 36.7%. Human accuracy only using text is 30.2%. 30 the next set of experiments is the video-only experiment or lazy student. It means that not looking at, not reading the question and directly by watching the video, try to answer it. And as you can expect, 
the results are pretty low. These are the results using both text and video and reported by other works. The best reported work is SNU wheel, uh, the ensemble model, which can go up to 40.7%. <clears throat> and here is our, our results. Using our ensemble method, we can go up to 43.4%. And here we show that if we remove any of the modules, spatial attention, temporal attention, or our text encoder, the results drop, which means that all of these modules are contributing. I want to mention that um, these results uh, got the first place in the LSMDC challenge uh, uh, when we were submitting the paper. And it, it is the second best results of all the time this challenge was up. So here are some qualitative results. For this video, the question is someone grabs her arm, pulls her clothes, and blank her lingering kiss. So our method could successfully find the answer, which is gives. Here is the spatial attention that our method could produce. And as you can see, it is where the action is happening. And here is a temporal attention. In the temporal attention, we show shots of this video. And the warmer colors like yellow means higher attention. And the colder color like blue means lower attention. As you can see, this last shot, which has nothing to do with this answer, got very low attention score. And the shots which were related got higher score. Another question, another example, someone walks out of the corner of his eye and the kid finds a cheap suit inside. We could find the answer, the word suit successfully. The special attention is on the place that the kid is picking up the suit. And the temporal attention is also finding the best shot to answer correctly. So we address the problem of video fill in the blank, which is one form of visual question answering. We propose a novel text encoder for fill in the blank. And also we discuss spatial and temporal attentions. What are the limitations? In fill in the blank, we know where is the exact position of the blank word in a sentence. What if we have a full sentence? So most of the times in real world, we have full sentences. Can we improve a sentence based on a video? So basically, given a video, can we alter a word in a sentence that can improve it? It leads us to the next work named Visual Text Correction. This chapter material is published in ECCV 2018. So let's define the problem. The input is a video and an inaccurate description about the video. For example, in this example, someone shakes his hand. The word hand is inaccurate because it's a head. So the output is the detected inaccuracy, where we say the word hand is inaccurate. And the output is the accurate word, which is head. So we have to predict the accurate word and replace the word hand with this. So what is an inaccuracy? Inaccuracy is an inconsistency in a sentence. It can be a textual inconsistency, like grammatical error. Or it can be contextual inconsistency, like somebody is swimming in a car. Although this sentence is grammatically correct, but it has something wrong in it because it's incon inconsistent. Also, the inconsistency can be with the video context, like the examples that we showed earlier. The word hand is inconsistent with this video. So in our approach, we have two steps. In the first step, we have an inaccuracy detection module, which can detect the inaccurate word in a sentence. And we have the correct word prediction module that given the detected inaccuracy, it can predict a correct word to replace the inaccurate word and make the sentence uh, accurate. So here's the formulation. So let's first formulate the inaccuracy detection. Given the video and the inaccurate sentence, we want to find the word in the sentence which has length n that has the maximum probability to be inaccurate. And we call it T star. For the correct word prediction, given the T star, video, and the inaccurate sentence, we want, we want to find a word in the dictionary that has the maximum probability to be the correct word for the word in position T star. 
Okay, so let's just start with the inaccuracy detection module. Our inaccuracy detection module is a detection by reconstruction and it has a text encoding and gated visual bias sub modules. We want to go through all of them one by one. So here we want to find the inaccuracy score for word T and we formulate it as a reconstruction error. In our reconstruction formulation, x hat is the reconstructed word vector and x is the actual word vector. Also, v of this visual gated bias. We're going to talk about this in a little while. We combine all of these vectors with elements wise operations. And finally, using a trainable distance metric, we can find the final score for the inaccuracy in word t. So let's go through the text encoding. Let's represent our sentence with word vectors x1 to xn where th these are the words in that sentence. We know that each word has correlation and dependencies to its neighboring uh, words. So we need short-term dependencies and we're going to capture short-term dependencies with convolutional engrams. Also, we know that each word has a long-term dependency to all the words in the sentence from beginning to the end. And we're going to capture the long-term dependencies using LSTMs. Finally, we aggregate the, aggregate the output of the conv engrams and LSTMs into one vector and we call them x hat. So from x hat 1 to x hat n is the reconstructed word vectors in the sentence. And the, for the gated visual bias module, <coughs> we compute the VGG19 and C3D features out of the video and we get rid of the time of the video by doing a temporal max pooling. And we combine these two kind of features into one single visual, visual feature vector and we call it U of V. So visual gated bias. As we mentioned earlier, not all the words in a sentence or video description have a clear visual pattern. So basically, we want to look at the visual features uh, differently for each word in the sentence. So basically, we can get the visual features with each word separately. And we come up with word visual biases for word 1 to word n. And we call them v1 to vn as the visual gated biases that we show in the reconstruction formulation. So now let's go through the correct word prediction. So this was our inaccuracy detection module. And we get the inaccuracy scores out of that for all the words in the sentence. And we build a probability over all the words that which one has the maximum uh, inaccuracy. Then we can pull the reconstructed vectors using this probability map and come up with the final encoded sentence representation. And we can combine the encoded sentence representation with the encoded video U of V and pass it to a classifier to find the, the word with the maximum probability to be the uh, correct word to suggest. So here is one qualitative example. In the sentence we see, a faint smile kills the cor corner of her flashes. So in the crown truth, we know that the word flashes is inaccurate and the accurate word to replace that is word lips. So using only text, we could find the inaccuracy correctly, but we couldn't um, uh, predict the best word to replace that. So the just text uh, predict the word face. But using both visual features and text, we could both detect the inaccuracy correctly and predict the correct word. Another example, people creep out from their hiding beating. So in the ground rules, the word beating is wrong. And the accurate word to replace that is the word place. Using only text, we couldn't uh, detect the inaccuracy correctly or find the accurate word correctly. But using text and video, we could uh, detect the inaccuracy and also predict the correct word. 
So for the data set, to the best of our knowledge, there is no available data set with human made errors. So we decided to generate or synthesize a data set to do our research. So we use the movie description data sets and given a sample sentence, for example, he comes out wearing a hat, we target a word to replace it and make the sentence inaccurate. To do that, we extract the part of a speech tags and here we see that the word wearing has the VBG tag in the sentence. And we draw one sample from all the words which can, ta can take same tag. So we drew the word being and the sentence becomes, he comes out being a hat, which is an inaccurate sentence. So here are some quantitative results. So there are, for the only inaccuracy, inaccuracy detection task, the random guess is 8.3%. <clears throat> In the eight experiments that we use only text, first we use the commercial web application as a baseline, and it gives us 18.8%. .8%. Then we used a vanilla LSTM without our proposed detection formula, and it can give us 28%. Then again, we use an LSTM, but this time with our de proposed detection by reconstruction formulation, and it could improve the results to 58%. Then we did some ablation study using by LSTM 67.2, Using convolutional engrams without position encoding, 66.8, convolutional engrams 69, and convolutional engrams and the long-term dependency, which is LSTMs, 72.5%. For the experiments with video and text together, if we use the visual features as just concatenation with the other features, it can get 72.8%, but when we use the proposed visual gated BIOS, in this work, we can improve the results to 74.5%. For the correction task, the random accuracy is almost zero. And for the just text experiments, a vanilla LSTM can give us 17.2%, and our proposed method can improve the results to 35.2%. For the video and text experiments, in one experiment, we split the uh, network into just detection and a fill in a blank, and we didn't uh, train it end to end. We trained each of them separately, and the accuracy was 36%. Then we trained our method end to end with C3D features and improved the results to 38.6%. Then we trained the model with VGG19, 38.8, and both VGG19 and C3D, 38.9%. So as a summary, we introduced a novel problem named visual text correction, and we formulated a deep network to find the inaccurate word and also predict the correct word to solve the inaccuracy. In the last two chapters, given a video, we either fill, fill in the blank or detect and fix an inaccuracy in a sentence. So in both works, we use a video to manipulate a sentence. How about the opposite problem? Given a text, can we generate a video? So the material of this work is under review in ECCV 2020. So what is the problem definition? We have a sentence as the input, like baby walking, and we want to generate a video. So the output is a generated video or fake video. So in our proposed approach, given the input sentence, we pass it to a sentence encoder which we built it upon the popular BERT encoding. And we construct two distributions representing the first and last frame of the video. Then we sample one point from each of these distributions and we construct a path in the latent space. And using some up-pulling blocks, we build the RGB video at the end. So let's talk about our text encoding in details. So what are the common challenges? There are many rare words and phrases in the training. For example, the phrase blonde hair appears only once in A to D data set. And we have a lot of unseen words during the test time. So to solve this, uh, 
problem, we use bidirectional encoder representations from transformers known as BERT, which is a pre-trained uh, text encoding network on English Wikipedia. It gives us rich representation even in presence of rare phrases. So given the input sentence, we pass it to the BERT encoding and we apply two layers of, of fully connected and ReLU on top of that to get the final encoded sentence. Then given the encoded sentence using linear transformations, we construct two distributions representing a start and an end distribution of the video. We represent each of these distributions with its mean vector and a standard deviation uh, uh, vectors. Now, given these two distributions, we sample one point from each, and we construct a line using interpolation between the start and end points. And we need the number, we interpolate with the number of frames that we need to generate. So, as a context aware transformation, we use conditional batch normalization that we basically pass the uh, latent points to a CBN or conditional batch normalization where the condition is the encoded sentence. And it gives us the final constructed latent pass. So this is the general formulation of conditional batch normalization where X is input and C is the condition. So first, we normalize the input with its mean and variance. And then we scale and shift it with two functions named lambda and beta. These two functions are linear transformations on the condition C, which is basically text in our case. And it gives us the final normalized output, which is X bar. So given the normalized latent points Z1 to ZT bars, Using a fully connected and reshape, we make these representations spatial representations. And using up-pulling stack blocks, we make the final RGB frames. So let's go through the details. Given a latent point named ZI, we make it a 4x4x1024 four by four by dimensional spatial features using fully connected and reshape. And we pass it to up-pulling blocks. So here is the details of our up-pulling block. It has a longer path, which has con uh, two sets of conditional batch normalization, regular ReLU, and 2D convolutions. And it has a shorter path, which use only one convolution block. Also using nearest neighbor interpolations, we increase the spatial size of the input by two. So we're gonna have an output size which has twice the height and twice the width of the input. And we repeat it till we reach 64 by 64 dimensional output and using one convolutional, one to the convolutional with three filters, a, a RGB frame. So the discriminator task is to distinguish between real and the generated video. So in the first step of the uh, discriminator, we enrich the input by applying edge detection on each of the frames and also get the average over all the frames in one batch. And we concatenate them to the actual RGB frames. Then we pass them to a stack encoders. We have a multi-frame encoder and single frame encoder, which we will talk about them in details in the next slide. And finally, we drive the one region-based discriminator and one single frame discriminator, and also one multi frame discriminator. And finally, we write the loss as a hinge loss. So let's go through the details. So here is the detail of our stacking encoder block. So given the input, which has shape H by W by C, in one pass, we encode it with one convolution with a stride two, leaky relu, another convolution, and in another pass, we encode it with just one convolution and one average pooling with a strike two. And finally, we aggregate the output of these two paths. The output has half the size of the input. So to write the discriminator loss terms, 
we need to define a distance between the sentence and video. So we show it by D of V and E of S, where the V is the encoded video, which can be a real or generated video, and the encoded sentence E of S, which first we map it using W of E to the same space of the video, and then we gate the video feature using this vector. And finally, using trainable distances, we find the final distance between V and E of S. So here is our generator loss function. It has three terms. The first term is a multi-frame discriminator. Second term is single frame and region-based discriminator. Our, for the discriminator loss, we use hinge GAN, which tries to decrease the score for the generated video G of S and increase the score for the real video V. And each of these lines again show the 3D or the multi-frame based discriminator, 2D uh, discriminator or single frame discriminator and also region based discriminator. So let's talk about the data sets we use in this research. The first data set was actor action data set or A2D. It has sentences associated with actors performing actions. It has 60, over 6,600 sentences with corresponding videos, 811 nouns, 225 verbs, and 189 adjectives. And it has 43 classes as actor and action tuples. For example, baby and eat is one class. The second data set is UCF 101, which we provide video level sentence annotations for nine classes. Here are those nine classes like gymnastics or cliff diving. We ask annotators to describe each video. And this is one example of what our annotators annotated. Side view of guy playing golf on grass with black pants. It has 182 unique words with maximum sentence length 22. And our final data set is robot object manipulation which has textual comments to robot uh, for the robot object manipulation task. It has 11 unique comment sentences with over 1800 video sequences. And each comment has a structure of task and object. For example, push the white plate from left to right. So let's go, go through some quantitative results. For the quantitative results, we use some standard evaluation matrices. The first one is inception score, which we have to fine tune an I3D network on each of the data sets. We also use the threshold inception distance or FID. For the FID, once we computed over all the videos, and also once we computed on each class separately, and we call it intra class FID. And finally, we have R precision, which is a ranking metric, and it uh, measure how well a retrieval model can retrieve sentences based on a generated video. So let's start with A to D data set. So here we show the metrics. And the first baseline is only class labels baseline, which means that we just use classes to generate videos, deconvolution to generate videos, slurp and LSTM method to generate videos, com group, and finally R method. As you can see, R method can get the best results or very competitive results um, to all other baselines. We also show the real data output. Um, so for sure, real data has the best results here. Um, I would appreciate if everybody turn off their mics. Um, so the real data has the best numbers and uh, it gives us one good standing point to compare our numbers with them. So for the UCL 101 results, again, we use this, we evaluate all the same uh, baselines, insertion in score, uh, R precision, FID, and also intra-class FID. So we show all nine classes, and we see that 
Consistently, our method can outperform other methods. And the last data set, again the same baselines. For the inception score, all FID, intra-FID, and the accuracy. As you can see, uh, it's always the best, our method is always the best, or very competitive to the best model. So let's look at some qualitative results. Like baby in pink is walking toward a man, baby crawling, black cats running on the grass, guy is eating a burger near a display, person playing football or eagle flying or on the sky or medicine ball thrown on the floor. Some UCL 101 results like side view of a fencer behind the biker on the road between cars side view of a biker wearing red floor gymnastic side view wearing purple along the sleeves and some robotic uh, robot manipulation results uh, pick up the white plate pick up the red ring pick up the black dumbbell or push the white plate so in this chapter we studied the text to video generation on wild and realistic data sets like A2D where we have free form sentences we don't have any assumption on the structure of the sentence each video can have multiple, uh, each data set uh, can, uh, can contain multiple objects and actions. And there are a high variety of backgrounds. We exploited Latin linear interpolation model in modeling temporal contents. And we provide a complete qualitative and quantitative study. So in my dissertation, I went through the multi-concept video retrieval problem, video fill in the blank, which is a novel form of visual cost question answering, visual text correction, which is a novel problem, and text to video generation. For the future work, uh, we suggest to solve the, uh, we see that um, for, the, for, for, for the video retrieval problem, the models suffers the most from the rare concepts co uh, caused by the rare concepts. And in the last sec uh, chapter, we saw that we can generate new videos. So it would be interesting to see if we can solve this problem by generating videos. And also, I suggest to reformulate the multi-latent ranking for deep learning. In video fill in the blank, we would like to extend it, this work to phrases and also improve the translation, machine translation methods by FIB. Visual text correction next step is to use human-made errors and also extend it from words to phrases. And for the text to video generation, latent space optimization can help us to construct better uh, latent passes and also semantic segmentation can give us better object boundaries. Here is a list of my published or under review papers. And finally, thank you for listening.